guys, I am Chris Kaler and I'm Amber from Kyojin and today we are back with The Bear uh, Episode 5, first season uh, I think this one is called Sheridan but I'm not sure because on Disney Plus it's, it's on Disney Plus it's written in French so yeah, maybe Sheridan Last episode, uh, Dogs, we went to a children's party uh, with Uncle Jimmy Right? Yeah. Because uh, we needed to start repaying repaying him back, and so we we made hot dogs for for the kids. And uh, Richie was there, and he his bottle of Xanax ended up in the punch. We still don't really know how. Either he put it in there, or it's just that he left it with the with the fruits, and it just got put in the bowl by accident. But the kids ended up sleeping around, and Peter was there, and he also slept and. I mean, we thought it was horrifying. They thought it was funny, so I guess no harm done. <laughs> yeah, we have a different way of thinking what's fun and what's not. Yeah, well, they got a, si a calm party, so that's what they wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, we heard a little bit about Carmi's father. We uh, Peter actually said some really nice things to, to Carmi about, you know, rooting for him when he was away and, and his sister also loved caring about him. Uh, we know he hasn't been in touch with his family and it was kind of a overwhelming last episode. There were a lot of people that knew him and talked to him about yeah. his brother and everything and he made fun of his job. Yeah, well, what do you do? Yeah, you mm -hmm. can't really start a fight. So there's that. And back in the restaurant, Tina was doing mashed potatoes with a new recipe and she was like telling Sydney, don't tell me what to do, like as usual. Come on, tell me that is shit, that is that is not good. Yeah, and Sydney said it was actually pretty good. And she to praised be praised, her. yeah, to be praised, put her in a good mood and she called her chef. Not Jeff, chef. So that's good. She's starting to open up yep. and be part of the team. Yeah, now she just needs to put on put on the apron. Uh, I can't speak today. Okay, so this is where we are. Let's jump in this episode and see what they have in store for us. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of these episodes and check out our Patreon for the full-length reactions. All right, let's go! You, you also have uh, food dreams. Is your apartment on fire? She had... oh shit! A lot of pills. Did you see what type of pills? A little look into her life. I like that. She has a speed poster. <laughs> yeah. Just looking at your cogs. You're right. Check average gets killed at night. The price is too low. Barely covers labor. You need a new dinner menu. 100%. Working together. For the new menu. Mm -hmm. Maybe a play on tongue and cheek. Braised beef, a short rib, and risotto. Maybe. Man, this book is wild. Our guy, you uh, working his passion. What was that? Yeah? Oh no. Oh no, I know what this is. <gasps> oh, 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 oh. oh yeah, we needed this. Close for lunch. No, it was one service could kill us. You don't think this oh, is putting shit. it at risk for oh, no. a service? No. no, this is fine. Yeah, so you go you come in to eat and there's like toilet water everywhere? Yeah, you don't eat where you shit. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Tina, Sydney, Ibra, you guys with me in the kitchen. We're gonna go over that new menu still, okay? Marcus, desserts, please. <laughs> Thank you, chef. They already don't have money. Just lock this shit down, get it dried off. Fax, bring in a shop vac, okay? Fax mouth is a shop vac. Oh my god, you're so funny, Richie. Yeah. Right. We barely have time. But it's true, if we lose one service, we're not making the money and we cannot afford that. A little bit of capers. I cook that. And your components, Carmen. I know. We're gonna add a bit of white wine, and then you got some hot stuff. Let that deglaze the bottom of the pan. You want him to learn that really quickly and just implement it right away on the same day. Oh man. Parsley. It looks fucking good, but I hope they can keep up. See, wanna try this? No, Jeff. That's the face of someone who loves. Smells <laughs> 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 so good in here. Fuck and attack! You got Latrina? Latrina. The smell of the toilet, and then you come in, the smell of this. Mm hmm. <laughs> Don't strip the thread. I'm not stripping the thread. Oh, <sighs> uh, yeah. Stop trying to fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's a human resources offense. Guess what? You're looking at human resources. Really? Yeah. Change jobs. 
Carmi says he's down a couple cooks. Do you think that I can apply? <laughs> Don't take Didn't, him seriously. Didn't you say that he's the one who knows how to cook? <laughs> he's the only actual <laughs> chef on the cast. Yo, is this warm enough? I think so. Yo, check this shit. What's up? Oh my god. Yo, should we do a bakery? I just finished the instructions. There are two ways to go about lacto fermentation. Yo, we need to go to Copenhagen and fuck that place. What are the two ways? Focus. Okay. Vacuum sealed plastic bag. Or... Uh, yo, Carmen. Uh, can I borrow a sous vide bag, chef? What the fuck you doing? Fermenting. You know how to seal it? No, chef. We can learn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for this. Hey, chef Trying to improve your skills to diverse your techniques. We good on cake, chef. Please don't get lost in that shit. I trust you. You yeah, still do your job, but keep that passion going. Mm -hmm. I graduated high school. Good start. Be serious, man. I'm being serious. Who knows? Maybe he's gonna be a good chef. Give him a chance. Him? I don't know. I think it's it's gonna be a running joke or something. <laughs> I got heart. Oh, you're gonna need brain. They did say they need a new chef, so new cooks. I'm really good on the keyboard. No, you're not. Well, A, yes, I am, and B, I joined a jazz fusion class, so in your face. You're supposed to focus on the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fucking restaurant. Why do I give a fuck that you play the keyboard? I'm a hard worker. I got a great vibe. Fuck your vibe. Don't ever fuck my vibe. I swear to God, I will fuck anything I want to fuck. Just like I root for Marcus's in Spashion, I'm gonna root for this guy. I'm sensing some tension between you two, man. Oh, dude, dude. We don't need this. Should I bring it up? Should I bring this up? Yes! No! <laughs> yes! Oh, that's cool. Eh, uh, typical Tuesday. I no! Should I break this up? Yeah! No! Yes! Yeah! yeah! No! <laughs> what the fuck, Carmi? Can you shut the fuck up, please? He is Cause me! Cause you know me. I don't he like is a fucking like asshole! Cause no problem! I wasn't even gonna say this! He is selling fucking coke in the back alley of the beef! I can't fucking go. Like, stop! Wait, whoa, what? Whoa. Is that the phone call? What was that was that was about? I think it is. That's bad. We need to talk about this. <laughs> if you want to keep doing your thing, you need to do your job. Yep. I think he's gonna rush it too much. Yep. This machine also has a rap sheet of being broken, so... Dude, dude, dude! I shouldn't have fucking said it. Just shut the fuck up. I don't deal, deal like that, you know? Like... But you still deal. Out of my restaurant. Out of the alley behind your brother's restaurant to help it. To help it? Wasn't my idea, by the way. Whose idea was it? Don't say it was his brother. No, we can guess. Well, let me ask you something. How the fuck do you think we made it through COVID, huh? Side hustle. We're trying to make a straight business. And... I should call the fucking police on you. It's about to blow. For being a naive person. No, we're done. Not just the machine. Everything. God, oh, 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 I swear to God. Blow a fuse, all right? Ah, yeah, way, everything down. Oh no. There are too many problems in this place. <laughs> and we keep adding. Nothing works. There's no money to, to repair it. That's every bag of ice in River North. Yeah, we will lose the food. <laughs> Good news and bad news, Carmi. Sure. Condenser sure. is fried. It's gonna cost a couple racks to fix, but I gotta connect on the condenser guy. What's good news? The connect! Uh, okay. <laughs> um, you know what? Actually, change your plans. We're gonna take everything. Just take it outside, all right? Take it outside. Do a barbecue. Yo, my guy. Yeah, can I ask you a favor? Make an event. Do yeah. something. Improvise. You're a lifesaver, man. You're a real stunt. I love him. Uh, thanks, cousin. They talk behind his back and they don't like him, but he's always he's, there. He's so sweet. Nice to see you guys. What's going on? We just needed help. We asked Pete's permission here, right, Pete? Oh, you asked Pete. Because they knew he was not going to say no. Because he said he was glad to be a part of the family. Can we do this later? I kind of got a lot going on. Yeah, I also have a lot going on. Did you know I recently had a brother die, too? Dark. Yeah, dark. It's true, though. He deals with his grief a certain way, but he doesn't help anyone else or ask if they're okay. You're such a soft, shitty bitch. 
What? You call Pete because you're too scared to call me? That's weak. I call Pete because every time I call you, you talk a bunch of shit and I can't really get into a fight right now. You only call me when you're freaking out. You only appear when you need something. You never got back to me about the thing. You've spent every minute since you've been back in that fucking restaurant and now you're taking advantage of Pete? I'm fine with all that, except I do kind of like Pete now. And yes, I... such a fucking attitude. I went to the thing. He did. He just didn't tell her. And we like Pete because he's nice. Yeah. And kind of drugged him last episode. All family? See? That's easy. Talk. Will you fight with me tomorrow? <laughs> That's love. Between f family, you Siblings. know. Siblings. We got one hour to serve a chef. Chef, there's a light out front. There's no more space. Angel, I want you to take every single stock pot we have, put it on the stove, get all the beef, put it in gravy. Tina, switch to potato prep. Take charge, girl. No, that's bad though. We need that. Gas line down. We can't open. But we can't miss a service, so we're gonna have to do something. You make a barbecue. Yeah. We have an uncle. Well, we half of our family works with meat and and just. C'est quoi traiteur en anglais déjà? Caterer. Caterer, yeah. Uh, they do, I don't know what it is in English, but uh, they're, they specialize in michoui. So like huge meat stuff like on, on fires like this and they just turn to meat and all of that and mm. they make buffet and stuff so like that. So good by the way. Yeah, when, whenever we have a family gathering, we eat that. Gas line is still down, power's out, so outdoor lunch service. Improvise. You make it an event and it's publicity. No. Let me get a full line restock, please. Towel, Christina? Yes, please, because it's very flamey. Yo, chef, it's a fire. <laughs> but yeah, when you when you have nothing, you do what she got. Yeah, you you improvise. Chef, all right? Fucked up. I was behind on cakes. I tried to speed it up, and I blew the fuse. Yeah. Shit happens. You deal with it. You, you move know, on. Go from chill to unchill in a second, but you got to stay ahead on your work. That's just that. Well, my first job was McDonald's. You don't get to be creative. Mm-hmm. Just... And the ice cream machine is broken. I won't make a mistake again. That's what yeah, they you... say. Not because you're you, just because shit happens. I started a fryer fire. Night after I won food and wine's best new chef, nearly burned the place down. It is a dangerous job. You have this minute where you're watching the fire and you're thinking, if I don't do anything, this place will burn down and all my anxiety will go away with it. But you can't do that. And you put the fire out. Right? And you put the fire out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what's up? You want to be a baby for another minute? You're trying to party. Oh, party, miss. Sorry. <laughs> it, like you said, it'd be so easy to just let it go to shit and just give up. Yeah. Well, you don't do that, right? You care about the job too much, and that's not how you do things. Fifty-five hundred dollars. Yeah, man, I'm sorry, but yes, dude. You said you had a connect. Yeah, I definitely, definitely did not. Don't, ha don't have a connect. <sighs> how are we gonna get fifty-five hundred dollars that fast? Fuck. Man. Fuck. Eh. Uh, so we're going back to selling drugs because we have no choice. Obviously, I'm going to have to think about it. Cousin, it's one more time. It's never again. I want it far away. I don't want to know the details. We need this. We? Say Mate. Richie. No. Say Mate, Neil. You didn't even win. This is me winning. God damn, they are children. Mate. 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 It means nothing. Your wish is my command, Neil. Cousin, this is the last time, right? Yeah. yeah. Until the next thing broke. Oh! Hey! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> and like you said, this place is hell, is like crazy. It's a shit show. Things go to hell every day. Mm -hmm. You're trying to survive through it all. Like, when you have nothing that works for you, yeah, you, you'll you probably end up doing shitty deals like this. That's probably how his brother started. But look where he ended up. I know. You're great today. Thank you. Mm. It really reminded me of like catering. That energy, I don't know. What was the deal with that? Was that just like the world or? Oh geez, it was a lot of things. Got too big, too fast. Wasn't exactly liquid enough for a brick and mortar and so running it out of my garage was stupid my credit got destroyed i mean the whole shit got rocked there's not a night i don't stay up just thinking about what i could have done different it was the first time i didn't have a complete 
an utter psychopath behind me screaming pushing and yelling and i thought i i wanted that you know but look where that got me so just means you need to change some things around i don't know sometimes it takes time for something to really take place and to work well which is that she was not prepared enough maybe but the fact that she still dreams about it to me says that she might still want it and to be fair this place is literally giving people chances like you want to try something like you don't like how it works in other places mm -hmm. so come here we'll give you the freedom to do your thing like as long as you can keep up with the actual work yeah. we'll give you freedom to start on your passion Shall an idea? Well, her dreams changed a little bit, so. Cola Braze. Instead of focusing on what, on what she failed back then, she's thinking about how to improve stuff in the future. And to be fair, like whatever, like now you work with us, right? So whatever didn't work back then, Find a way to improve it mm -hmm. and bring it here to the restaurant. I mean, like we said, shit's gonna happen anyway, and that type of work and any type of work. Like we said, like he <laughs> said. <laughs> I mean, like he said, I mean, no, but we did say that. We agree strongly. <laughs> we agree. I mean, you can be the best at your job, like you've been doing it for so many years, shit's still gonna happen. Yeah, especially in a to... job to be okay with it, find a solution, and move on. Especially in a job like that, where it's so easy, like, there are so many factors that can go wrong, and it's not, you're not in control of everything, like, the machine can break down, it's not mm -hmm. your fault. Like, whether or not you push it too much, like, it's, you didn't choose to work with a machine that's, like, 30 years old or older, mm -hmm. and that works like, like shit. Like, if you need it to perform, and it can perform, that's the machine's fault, that's not on you. So... If you work in an environment where you're bound to make mistakes and you beat yourself up over every single thing that goes wrong, you are not gonna last in mm. the industry. Uh, to be fair, like I, you know, I studied to be a movie director, and because I love like working behind the scenes and for movies and stuff. And the literal description of a movie director at the and yeah, the base of it is to solve problems, right? Yeah. So <laughs> I would read on directors talking about how like or i mean people that work with directors that would say like oh this guy like you would go to him and he'd always have an answer and my teacher once said like that's basically what a director does so if someone comes comes up to you with an issue make shit up you do not want to be like oh fuck like oh wait i'm stuck before a wall now you got to come up with something and improvise right it's because you're the captain you need, exactly. you need to show your team that you know what you're doing and you have a direct path toward your uh, your goal, basically. Yeah, yeah. Because as soon as you work with multiple people, as soon as you add multiple departments or m multiple mm -hmm. stuff, like multiple factors, sh shit will happen. But you cannot let every issue stop mm -hmm. you because the work is never going to happen. It's never going to get there. Do you know what I used to tell myself when I used to work in uh, an, admi an administration at the motel? Uh, basically, I had a bunch of stuff happening at the same times that I need to do, and uh, some people to that I one time your uh, your um, uh, dryer uh, caught fire. <laughs> yeah, no, I got a call from me just said the dryer is on fire. I just took the extinguisher and I just run as fast as I yeah. can with my slippers. <laughs> and I, your did, slippers. I did ballerine. I had flats. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no running shoes, so I just run and I, <laughs> I extinguish it. You gotta no, act, right? No, but I mean, when you have a lot happening at the same times, what I'm telling myself every single, every, every single time, one problem at a time. If you try to take on too much, at the same time, you won't accomplish anything. Exactly. You won't solve anything. Mm -hmm. So just take one issue at a time, deal with that issue, and go to the next one afterwards. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, like, I understand feeling bad if you think, like, oh, shit, I pushed a machine and it led to everything going dark. But while you're sitting alone, bashing yourself on the head, like, 
hitting yourself on the head, saying like, oh, it's my fault, it's my fault. You're not out there helping them deal with the issue, right? Mm. And like we said, like things got to keep moving. You got to, you know, there's, there's shit to do. So you need to improvise and come up with stuff, which I thought Sydney was great this episode. And I guess like she talked about the catering business that she did yeah. out of her garage. Like she probably found freedom from that. Like she said, she it was the first time she did not have a psychopath over her shoulder well, screaming she, at her. She was her own boss basically, right? Yeah. And that's, I mean, Carmi also like finds this solace now that he's away, I guess, because when he was back in the uh, other restaurant, he had that too, like a psychopath screaming over his shoulder and stuff. Mm -hmm. There is so much stress from that and you know, I guess you you're a bit, you're expected to just follow the rules and do what the, that other guy is saying. So there's no that much place for freedom. But when you're your own boss, when you're in charge, or wh when you are uh, basically uh, what's the word? De la français. I don't even know what it is in French, man. I'm just I, I'm drawing a blank. Describe what you're meaning. Encouraged. When you're encouraged okay. to, it's just I came up with a blank. When you're encouraged to, to you know, uh, work your passions, just go places, start new stuff. This is so much more peaceful than that other environment where you're just an employee. This is creativity. This is teamwork. Mm -hmm. This is calmer. And when you're alone, you have all of that, but you don't have the support too. Mm -hmm. So the catering thing gave her all the freedom but a lot of work as well. It probably, like, there was probably a way to make it work, but I believe that un unless she had a crazy strong plan, it was doomed to fail because she did not have any support. But in this place, she gets the support. She also gets the freedom to, to you know, do something, be someone, come up with ideas, and she'll be listened because Carmi is open to listening when she tells him, like, you're not listening to me, he hears her and he tries to change his, his approach with her. This episode, like, he, it started with him telling her that he read her notes, he read her plans, and he wants to change things based on what she told him. Yeah. This is a place where you can grow, where you're not trying to recreate the vision of someone else who's obsessed with being right. You know, being the shit. Like, it's not about Carmi. He's the head chef. Mm -hmm. It's not about him. I mean, it basically told Marcus that you can be all creative as you like, but keep yourself ahead of your job first. You know? Oh, yeah. Well, that's for sure. Like, as long as you do the job, you can do... Mm -hmm. Like, he's, he's going to encourage you to try new things because at the end of the day, the goal is not to make the head chef better. It's to make the restaurant better. Yeah. Right? So it's a team thing for the place. So do whatever you want. It's not about us. It's not about him. It's about the place and what you can give it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I feel like, yes, here they can be creative. Here they can be, you know, open and just be themselves and be listened to. So I guess like mm -hmm. she made the right choice coming here and her genius is really helping because she came up with great mm -hmm. uh, strategies in this episode. The outside thing with the, with the grill was perfect. Well, the fake grill. <laughs> Fake right. grill. They made a grill. Well, they created a grill, sort of. Like they made a yeah. Yeah. It really hit home because, like I said in the episode, like our family has this. Like uh, half of our family is in the the mechanics business. The other half is in the <laughs> catering business. Yeah. Like well, sort of stuff. catering. Yeah. I don't even know. I don't know if it's actual catering. Catering. It is. It is. Mm. Yeah. I mean, well, they work with meat. There's, uh, there's the butcher type of business with the meat and stuff. They are butchers. And they are the do offer services of catering for okay. events. Catering. Catering. Cater cat. Cat is a cat. Meow. Catering. <laughs> catering for events, yeah. Yeah. But still, like, since we have that in our family, every time we have a family gathering, this is what we do. So outside, they create this big, like, mishui pit when with the big, like, pieces of meat then they just roll it around for, for hours and then we just enjoy it and he cuts it right off of it like it's just it's authentic it's good as fuck and it's it's familiar so i love it so to see this yeah. like this is what i thought about i was like just do it outside make an event and to be fair like when you do something different like this people are attracted like to to what you're doing they want to see what's going it's on basically free publicity yes because like and then we need that we don't have the money which makes me think about the drug thing going on i'm uh, I wish I could say I'm surprised. I understand why, but I so not love it. But it's the fact that they are 
backed up against a wall. Like the place is so far down in the shit. I don't know how it got there to begin with. Like what happened that made it so difficult. But it's like back in the day they should have done they should have done something and they did not have the money and it just kept getting worse and worse. And it's like Michael was, you know, he was struggling to breathe and he personally and and professionally he was struggling and he turned to to the the easy illegal stuff that would help keep the place afloat because it mattered so much to him and now Carmi's stuck it against the same wall he's also struggling to breathe and he's trying to make it legit especially since like going into the drug thing after what happened to his brother it it hits close to home and yeah. it's but sometimes it's touchy it's like if you're so far down with your business, is it better to just run it down and start anew? Or try to patch a boat that is that is uh, sinking, basically? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think to... But that would mean basically let, giving up on the restaurant and, yes, starting anew. But I think he's still stuck right now in the idea that this is the place that Michael had. This is the place that we thought about. There was the drawing and stuff like again I, I still believe that this was a thing that they shared and it meant so much like, even when they work like they talk about like the recipes and stuff he's like oh when was the first time my brother made that for you and there are so many memories linked to this place we keep seeing flashes of photographs and just yeah. it, so many so many people are, are linked to this restaurant so many memories to just give up and be like okay I'll start a new that means that this place is gone so I think he's trying to keep it afloat because of what it means but it is sinking so either we're gonna be really lucky or we're gonna have to change mm -hmm. our way to, to do things because yeah those those mm -hmm. machines are old as fuck they are not reliable we do not have the money and if we are stuck doing illegal deals to keep it afloat that's not the way to go but I don't know we'll see what he does uh, before we end I just want to go back to what we saw about soon at the beginning and the fact that she has a lot of prescriptions. What are those? Are are those for sleep? For sleeping? I don't know. She took them when she woke up. So I don't know. To be fair, it looks like she's spending the whole night awake. So maybe it's to keep her awake. Maybe. But I mean, if it was one type of med medication, she would not have so many bottles. But I don't know. But that's a lot of bottles. And I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. <laughs> All right. Uh, Interest, interesting. I'm kind of... I guess the life of a, ch of a chef is a stressful life, so yeah, you need a little... But I mean, me at up. first, I thought maybe, are those for anxiety, maybe, anxiety or something? Maybe. I mean, it, Carmi's stressed as fuck, so I'm not, I would not be surprised if she was as well. Hmm. You put so many expectations on your shoulders and you work with people that scream all the time and have you seen how the, the environment is in that restaurant? Yeah. Wouldn't you be, ex you know, anxious? I would be. I mean, I'm going to take just a... Uh, bottle of water and just spray them <laughs> when they are fighting and stuff mm. anyway okay so that's gonna be it for today thank you guys so much for watching this episode with us i am losing my voice so sorry <laughs> if it sounds scratchy i'm doing my best uh yeah if you want to see the next episode right away it is on patreon already you can check it out the link is in the description below and if you don't want to the next one will be out on youtube next week see Bye. you guys